We're again sitting in positive territory. Uh, we've seen such a nice push to the upside in the month of April. Uh, are you expecting this move to continue? And again, does it really have to do with a lot of the earnings that we've seen filtering through? Yes, it has everything to do with uh, you know the quarter one earnings that have come through, particularly in the banking sector, where investors seem to be a lot more confident uh, that you know most of the banks have basically put behind them a lot of the non-performing uh, loans in financial year 11. Uh, we've also seen quite a string of good numbers coming from some of the non-financials as well, including cement and consumer companies. I think that will continue to bode pretty well for the market. Encouragingly, uh, volume traded have also picked up quite sharply. We're doing. Uh, in the area of plus $15 million daily. I think today we did close to about $25 million. Uh, so I think that's pretty, pretty positive for, for Nigeria. In terms of sort of value traded, it's sort of one of the most sustained high volume of value traded we've, we've experienced uh, since the start of the year. So quite positive. So as you said, uh, we've got the likes of consumer and cement stocks doing quite well, but I'd like to hone in on those Guinness numbers that were released, and uh, we didn't see fantastic numbers coming through. Yeah. Turnover on, only increasing by around 2.5%, and then profit before tax down around 24%. Yeah. Uh, is this a disappointing uh, scenario that is actually playing out for you here? Yes, it was disappointing for us. Guinness is actually, you know, in terms of the trend we're seeing, uh, amongst his peers, you know, it's gone sort of the other way around, and uh, we think it's more reflective of its weaker competitive position in financial year 11 uh, relative to some of the other key players like Nigerian breweries, which uh, recorded pretty strong bear volumes within the same period. Uh, so uh, we, we're still quite positive on the stock going into the medium to long term, but I think this is obviously a challenge you'll have to work out over the short term. Uh, the company, in the meantime, is, you know, spending a lot more money on and as you know, this is really quite important uh, within the bear or, you know, uh, this branded good segment of, of, uh, of, of this business. So uh, they, they, they're making a lot of investments within the uh, sort of reactivating brands, you know, and also deepening their route to market, particularly in the south and looking to aggressively explore opportunities in the north as well. So I think that, you know, uh, beyond this challenge, this, I think strong for Guinness. Uh, going into the medium to long term, this considerable size of market share, 26.5%, uh, if not 27%. Uh, I don't think they're just going to give that up. Uh, Esile, if we could just now delve into Nestle, and you're talking about this consumer stocks. When you look at Nestle first quarter sales as a whole on a global level, we saw 7.2% organic growth uh, coming through. And when you zone in on the Africa portion, and of course the overall emerging market portion, we're seeing double digit growth coming through here as well. How did the Nigerian portion fare? Mm. It's done incredibly well, and uh, <laughs> it, it was obviously deliberate on the part of Nestle SA, you know, investing a lot more in Africa. Uh, so we've seen pretty much the same thing in places like Angola and Ivory Coast. Uh, Nigeria's numbers were up about 180% in the first quarter, uh, reflected mainly volume uh, growth over that period. They, they recently installed a commission, the new plant in, in, uh, in, uh, you know, in, in Shagam, which is very close to Lagos. And you know, they're pushing culinary products out of that, uh, that plant quite aggressively. And they've also opened new markets outside Nigeria. So at the moment, Ivory Coast and Ghana are key export markets at the moment, representing 1% of the total revenues. But you can expect that to grow, uh, I think, quite significantly over the medium term. I mean, as you're probably aware, that plant is the largest culinary uh, plant that any uh, food seasoning producer has in Africa. Okay, well, let's also just touch on UAC, and it's a company that we've spoken of quite uh, often, and it is also doing very well. We're seeing robust numbers coming through from this company. Uh, from a share price perspective, though, Asili, would you say that it's looking at fair value? Well, no, that's not true. Uh, we're quite upbeat on, on UAC, and it is actually one of our most preferred plays at, the, at this time. Um, we have a target price of around 47 naira per share. It's trading at a discount of about 44% to that, so there's still plenty of upside going forward. Uh, what we need to see now is, you know, very strong numbers coming from this company. They're currently restructuring key businesses, Grand Cereal, uh, restaurant business, uh, UAC Food, which was the, the business they tied up with, with Tiger Brand. So I think there's a lot uh, of potential growth coming from key business. Even the property business is also restructuring 
in the sense that they, they look into diversify, first of all, you know, the existing uh, uh, development por uh, portfolio uh, into some of the uh, sort of uh, lower luxury end of the market and also, you know, uh, diversify the broader portfolio into uh, rental or, or to, to include greater rental income over the medium term. So I think prospects are, are, are really strong and then we're expecting somewhere around about 18 percent per annum growth over the medium term. Uh, I think these are major catalysts for the business. Its dividend outlook is a lot stronger than it was uh, about uh, three months ago. Uh, we're looking at an average dividend yield of about 7.3 percent over the medium term. Uh, if you compare that to its local pairs of about 4 percent, you know, I think you can understand why we're quite bullish on the name. Uh, I think if you even look at where the Nigerian consumer is, you know, in, in sort of its evolutionary uh, cycle, you know, I think you want to yeah. be positioned in names like this, names producing staple food uh, uh, over the medium term. And, you know, they're, they're well positioned to benefit from that, you know, yeah. uh, the, the, the boom that we expect in the Nigerian consumer over the medium term.